So to begin, a summary of last week's lecture was basically just addressing and understanding the outline of the meaning of community and cultural heritage and how these concepts are explored and defined in our cultural landscape. We particularly looked at the ideas of tangible and intangible heritage, social significance and heritage value, and then understood them in relation to institutional top-down actors that implement and enforce and direct these ideas and give prominence to the idea of a site or practice having value. Welcome to week two of Community and Cultural Heritage. In this week, the ideas of community, memory, place and attachment will be explored. Furthermore, the ideas of meaning making will lead to an explanation on how our sense of things and places affects our sense of heritage, identity, memory and attachment. This week will lead us to our first case study discussion on Jewish heritage to explore the ways in which community heritage affects identity and shapes our sense of belonging through acts of intangible and intangible practice. The discussion topics for this week will be on concepts of what constitutes a thing, meaning making and memory, and what gives us a sense of placehood within our communities. Understanding the process of meaning making and our attachment to things, memories and ideas of heritage is a result of two things. Our own predispositions, attitudes, morals and beliefs, and the influence of structures, ideologies, and the presentation of things from cultural institutions and culture makers like museums and schools. Furthermore, a thesis of this would be that a combination of subjective projections and social influence form and inform our selfhood and identity. This affects our experience of heritage, our sense of belonging within a community, and our perception of ancestral ties and bounds and bonds to ancestral memory. So coming back to the basics, to begin from the very groundwork, let's ask the question, what is an object? Well, a simple explanation of this comes from the anthropologist Paul Basu, who used the framework of material culture to analyze that an object's traditional role is to cement fact, symbolism, and or history in a non-human form. So, if an object is simply a thing that has been given symbolic importance by an individual, this same concept can be transferred to the idea of place, which again comes under this process of meaning making. So, what is a place? Well, the sociologist Thomas F. Grian describes place as the ability to locate things on a cognitive map and the attribution of meaning to a built form or natural spot. So both an object and place are central components in the creation of a heritage identity and a sense of heritage community. But if this is the case, how do these understandings affect our judgment and meaning making? Well, as, as discussed, material culture describes objects and acts which are representative of an intangible or tangible heritage as things of meaning and living culture once they are given meaning by their audience. Therefore, Meaning making is about the reciprocal relationship between an individual and a thing. And this exchange affects our sense of understanding and sense of identity. So this relationship which inspires and affects our meaning making is symbiotic and reliant on us granting meaning to things whilst simultaneously recognizing things through our own pre-existing attitudes, morals and beliefs often given to us by our heritage identity, informed and shaped through social norms and beliefs. To explain this further and in more detail, we are dependent and reliant on things and acts to give order to our actions, and our identity affects our relationship to them. As objects can embody a certain sentimental quality, they can also simultaneously help give reference to things we don't connect to and that don't hold relevance to us 
all whilst in and of themselves being symbolically subjective and contextually relative and dependent on our own image of ourselves. Furthermore, our reliance on things to give us a sense of ourselves is a fundamental component in the process of meaning making and our entanglement with these things impacts our worldview and how we exist in the world because things with their prescribed qualities can inform our social, cultural, moral and ethical frameworks. The locality and material form of things cannot exist without human symbolic connection and connection to them. And therefore, meaningfulness is a central and key component in understanding this phenomena. The idea of an object or a place having a symbolic quality is through a fabrication of the human mind, as it exists in relation to what we assign and ascribe to it. It, it is purely personal and subjective. Therefore, the materiality of things can only become recognizable to us as things with meaning when our symbolic and conscious connections to them are born. This is a requirement in the meaning-making process of experiencing things. They become something recognizable and of value or association to our cultural and social life by conditioning these things with relevance and therefrom they become a part of the fabric of our culture, selfhood and heritage identity. As an example of this, when we enter a museum, there are objects everywhere, some reliant and recognisable to us through our own understandings. When we observe and relate to these objects, it says something about who we are, what we believe in and what values we ascribe to ourselves. The museum's objects help tell a story of who we are as individuals, which objects we connect to and which objects we reject and have no connection to. This paints a picture and a story of who we feel we are and what image of ourselves we wish to portray to others. As our connection to things is inherently bound to our perceptions of identity, self and heritage, when we attach to objects and places, and recognize them and their meaning that they have to ourselves. It shapes our perceptions of knowledge and selfhood, either helping cement our perceptions of ourselves or shifting them into something new when our perceptions come in opposition to these things and places. So now we have established these foundational ideas on how the meaning making process occurs through understanding the very basis of what an object's role is and what comprises a place to give it a placehood, all aspects that make up our heritage and community identity, we can move on to the case study of this week. This week's case study is particularly helpful as a reference guide for the essay examination and an opportunity to understand how to self-reflexively analyze our own heritage and community identities as the essay asks for our own personal reflective analysis rather than just an academic analysis. As this requirement may be something that you haven't written before, hopefully this case study can show you what is expected and how you can achieve both an academically rigorous yet personally informed analysis of heritage identity in relation to your own personal community ties. In particular, this case study should give you and a fundamental understanding of the aspects of place, memory, attachment and belonging and how these are part of and make up your community and heritage identity. The case study for this week will use my own personal connection to Ashkenazi Judaism as an illustrative example of how we can understand our own personal heritage within a cultural and community group and how this is affected and shaped by our attachment to place, memory, identity, and our sense of belonging. The term Ashkenazi refers to the Jewish diaspora that migrated to northern and eastern Europe during the Middle Ages. Through this change in location, a subset of Jewish culture was established, one enmeshed in Germanic cultural traits and heritage practices. This filtered down into the language spoken, the food eaten, and the cultural and religious practices. As I am both culturally affiliated to these practices, yet I rarely and peripherally practice them, 
I am going to look at how they have shaped and affected my life and how this process of identifying with my ancestry and heritage comes about. Ultimately, my sense of Judaism is, in, is bound in intangible and tangible heritage acts that help cement and bind my sense of belonging to the cultural group. Although these acts are culturally established and pre-existing myself, my subjective interpretations of them through my own perceptions of them based on my own values, attitudes, morals and beliefs affects my sense of belonging and kinship to them and in effect their community origins. This, this case study will also highlight this dichotomy between how our inherited cultural paradigms affect what meaning we apply to cultural acts based on our subjective realities and experiences. This acknowledgement helps paint a picture of how we affiliate acts of heritage with meaning based on our own attachment to place, memory, identity and our sense of belonging. As discussed, my connection to Judaism, which was established far before my time, is based on the pre-existing, established and wide-ranging practices of the Ashkenazi Jews brought to Europe from Israel suggesting that locality is fluid and our connection to it spans across time and space. This is seen through practices that transcend time and represent a place or location, yet still hold a sense of locality, even when they are removed and distanced from their original origins and owners. This is evident in the practice of speaking Yiddish, which is an enmeshment of Hebrew and Germanic languages, that molds together the traditional languages of Hebrew and Aramaic that are spiritually and sentimentally important to the Jewish people and entangles them in the languages of their locations in Europe. The sense of transient memory bestowed within cultural heritage practices di displays how a transcendental experience between agents of culture being the owners and originators of certain practices that can be embedded in historical texts, memorials, landscapes or more intangible legacies of the past such as trauma or pride can shape current behaviour and interpretations of heritage. This bestowal of memory and legacy is seen within the Ashkenazi practices that embody two locations and cultures of Israel and Europe. These practices are also affected by moral and ethical beliefs in this case of Ashkenazi communities, these practices are highly influenced by trauma and intergenerational memories of trauma passed on culturally and some have suggested genetically through subconscious predispositions. These experiences of landscapes are shaped in part by memories accumulated through everyday experiences and longer memories of childhood, places left behind and sensory qualities lost. This highly shapes their Ashkenazi identity and, in effect, their cultural habits and practices. This can be understood as a positive feedback loop in psychology, as trauma affects the community's identity and fear and perception of trauma shapes the community's choices and sense of belonging. Ross Wilson, a theorist, highlights this recognition and remembrance of the past also draws attention to particular features of society, how we view ourselves and how we view others and how we act in the present. So, as a community founded on memory and the maintenance of a heritage culture, despite the location and displacement of our people, Ross Wilson's statement rings true. Albeit a community dependent on the maintenance of a cultural heritage practice, I myself am also an individual defined by my enmeshment and involvement in simultaneous multiple cultural practices. Being Jewish, Australian and English, all these heritage communities and traditions affiliated with them affect my own sense of belonging and identity. This has, has led me to feel in a crossroads and this is a common theme of those existing sentimentally, culturally and subconsciously in multiple locations. This can lead to an overall sense of otherment and being in limbo. What makes my sense of Judaism different to my Australian and English heritage is how Judaism is defined and shaped by overarching ethical and moral principles. And in this way, it stands different to my other heritages as they appear more superficially bound to me, mostly based on location and family ties. 
What should be recognized in my sense of belonging and attachment to Judaism is my dependence and reliance on cultural practices to give order and a sense of purpose to my actions, morals, and beliefs. This shapes my identity, affects my relationship to place, space, and memory, and embodies my sense of belonging. Whilst I exist subconsciously in multiple locations, cultures, and histories, whilst all this exists, I also give a point of difference to my heritage. By attaching my own symbolically subjective and contextually relative beliefs and morals into my awareness and practice of my cultural heritage. Simply put, my cultural heritage does not define my identity, but I give it meaning through my own subjectivity and both consciously and subconsciously utilize my heritage through practicing and acknowledging it to help give my senses a sense of myself and belonging in a multifaceted and individualistic world. In an expandingly rapid individualistic and consumer-based culture and society, my heritage attachment gives me a sense of my humanness and existentialism, including giving myself meaning and reassurance. So to conclude, this week has looked at community, memory, place and attachment and explained these concepts in relation to cultural heritage identity. The case study this week has given an outline of how community heritage is a personal and interrelated disciplinary act that is affected by both our predispositions from our cultural and ancestral ties and our own personal identities. So next week we are going to be looking at something that is on a similar note which is historical narratives and memory scapes and that next week will address furthermore these ideas of place attachment, identity and belonging in relation to the historical narratives that are passed on and shared through our heritage and family ties.